Now, the rest of the story. All right, welcome back. I'm in the JCB getting ready to fire it up, or in the process of firing it up. It's actually the first real cold start we've had on it since the spring. It was like in the 20s when I was going through and doing this. But I'm out of my brother's place. I'm here alone. Everybody's working or busy or whatever else. And Ryan's cows need some hay. So I'm actually going to go ahead and attempt to do this by myself. And in the process, we're actually going to be cutting open the the wrapped bales that we did earlier this summer for the first time. And we can talk about those a little bit once we get that far. Uh, tracks out at Ryan's place, I think is definitely the, the, the right way to go. You'll see that here a little bit further on. But we took the bucket and the, the pallet tines out. We didn't have his bale tines readily available. But to address the bale tines and the pallet tines question, they each have their place. I like the pallet tines because more so on the Bobcat, the tired machine. Um, if you get stuck or you sink, whatever else like that, uh, you can use the pallet tines to kind of push your way back out and at least get out of the mud. The bale tines, you're more apt to bend them and break them. But don't get me wrong, they are nice, especially for moving hay in and out of the field, especially when we're using our, our hay wagon uh, to load and unload them. The pallet tines do work really good too if I'm just loading the wagon out in the field. Uh, but when it comes to unloading it, uh, the bale tines work best. But to add to that argument, when you're stacking bales two to three bales high. Um, I actually prefer using the pallet tines. It allows me to pick them up a little bit taller and are a little bit higher with the Bobcat in particular and get them stacked in the shed. Uh, the JCB works great stacking bales, three bales high. The Bobcat, it takes pretty much everything that the machine has uh, to get them stacked three high and then be able to, to get the pallet tines or even the regular bale tines backed out of the, the bale without tipping the stack over. So right here is, you guys are witnessing it, the first opening, the first cutting of the removal of this inline wrap that we've ever done on this farm in the history of ever, as far as I'm aware of. I don't believe that we've ever done it in the past. I think I asked Dad already and he said they never have, but with the silos and everything else like that, it just didn't really didn't really matter really couldn't justify it so the big thing that really comes in handy is a knife a really nice pocket knife comes into play here I used to carry your stereotypical just standard like pocket knife where it flips open and you have a two three inch long blade my problem with those is that you're constantly sharpening them because when blades get dull and they do very quickly with net wrap and plastic crab isn't quite so bad they it seems like you spend a lot of time trying to get them sharp and it's hard keeping them as sharp as as they are brand new i got my knife that i got from herschel that is incredibly sharp that let's say ryan and dad been using theirs pretty regularly but i actually have a two knives because i have a, my my standard knife and i have my backup knife it's just a regular old tool shop and it folds out like a regular pocket knife um, but it's actually a box cutter uh, with the removable blade you can switch the blade around and ever since I started carrying a knife like that I mean it's mainly it is used purely just for cutting and it, they actually do a lot better as far as cutting net, net wrap. I mean, the plastic wrap, it's like cutting paper, but when I'm round bailing and stuff like that and the rolls wrap or I'm changing out a roll of net wrap, um, being able to swap out your blades like in the field or while you're working, it, it is really nice. So uh, that's why I started using this, this tool shop. I've been carrying some, one of these around for, I think I'm going on year three and I don't see any reason to really change it out. Uh, this end bale here was more of an end cap bale. Um, that's actually from two years ago. And we just had it sitting out, and when we went to go put in the new bales, the straw bales, the new seating bales, 
Um, we put that bale on the end because it's already been weathered and it helps kind of seal up the rest of the tube, which it was grass as you could tell. And I'm going to go right ahead and feed that out with the other one right behind it. As far as the, the wrap, I do believe they put six to seven wraps around this stuff. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. This is my first real experience with the stuff and the stuff did seem to leak. I don't know why. Uh, it did have some molding on the surface. Um, it did have a, have a little bit of molding on the face, but that's really not what we were trying to avoid. We don't want mold, um, but we were looking for the fermentation. Like on this bale here, this is the first um, of the new seeding bales. The stuff did not get wrapped as quickly as we wanted them to, uh, but they still did keep should I say um, it's not like we were trying to keep dry hay but I'm sure the cows they really didn't seem too too afraid to eat on them so um, the big thing I've been wondering is as far as trying to do dry bales for storing in plastic wrap like this um, in a situation where we get all of our sheds full and we get towards the end of the season say like September and you go through and you're able to get them baled, dried out, let them sit for a week or so so they can kind of steam and do their thing. Um, if you can go through and wrap up dry bales and actually have them keep and not have to worry about them going sour on you. Because you can see like on the net wrap right around the outside edges, you can see where there's definitely moisture that had accumulated and that does kind of hurt you a little bit on your quality. I mean that is in my opinion so I was kind of wondering what it would take to actually if you used inline wrapping as a last resort at the end of the summer you could put your bales in dry bales of course and just with the intention of keeping the rain and the weather off of them and then feeding those first before you have to start using your bales out of the sheds um, anybody that has any experience whatsoever with wrapping bales speak up because I'd like to know um, that's a very honest question I have about that because bale storage uh, going forward here I'm um, we're probably gonna have a, a bit more hay going forward um, I don't really talk about cattle of course I've been talking about cattle but I don't have a whole lot of cattle of my own there is a cattle sale the 15th of November the way it's looking I probably won't be able to make it um, but it is a red Angus cow heifer sale I didn't realize they had one this fall I was actually planning on going to the one on April 5th and if things work out if it's raining yada 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 they're not calling for rain but the 10 day is really unreliable um, I would really consider maybe going and seeing if I can't pick up something with the intention of putting it in the the barn lot at Rockville so uh, something that you got to do that is like mandatory especially on the year when hay is kind of tight all across the country and you have hungry cattle you got to make sure you're putting your bale feeders on these things and it's muddy out that's why I'm using the teleboom because even though this has tracks this is a very heavy machine I think that's kind of like a downside to the JCB um, maybe this one in particular but I think that's maybe not even something to say about the JCB but I think that's something that can kind of hurt you when it comes to tracks. It is the overall weight of the machine those tracks are trying to carry because the ground clearance isn't really that high on the actual frame of this machine, on the on the belly of the machine. So it does seem like if you sink in very much at all with the tracks, you do end up dragging the bottom of the machine. And I do think that is kind of something to take into consideration when somebody is looking for a tracked machine or a tracked skid steer uh, to at least consider what kind of conditions you're going to be using in it in are you going to be running it through mud are you just playing on trying to run it across your hay fields to spread out compaction that's not that big of a deal but my thing is with tracks um, you definitely got to know how to how to use them how to maneuver with them and what you can and cannot do because as we have shown this is the muddy slop stuff right here 
uh, you can get these machines stuck uh, relatively easy if if you're careless uh, Ryan and I both have had our experiences Ryan's done it twice now I've done it once the only difference is, is that I actually got it stuck and ran the track off I'm the only one that's actually done that this year and that's purely just operator error so that's all I got for this video guys take care take it easy keep in touch I'll talk to you guys later